five. Here we go. It should say something and then we should be. It's a stormy round here lately. Da, 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 da. I see that it's here now screaming We're live. Da, da, da. Oh, you yeah. say that. should say something and then it should be. I've. Hold on. Here we go. There we go. Oh, it's kind of a weird delay feedback. Mm -hmm. I see that it's now screaming live. Sorry, we're getting some feedback here. here yes. There you go, Wayne. Take it away. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Here we are live, and we are part of the stormy panel. We are the stormy panel. We're not part of it. We're the whole thing. <laughs> My name is Wayne Smith, Wayne M. Smith, and uh, I'm sort of moderating uh, this wonderful panel here. This panel based around the play or opera, Stormy the Opera. And um, our players who were our main players, uh, collaborators in this particular effort, are Kay Adshead and uh, John Stormy Soul and Margot Stormy Heart. <laughs> so welcome out there everyone in a live streaming land. Um, <laughs> so we'll just jump right on into the questions. I have a list of questions here and uh, we will get started. Um, first of all, I'm gonna start with this question. Um, so this one, Kay, is directed to you. Uh, although, um, cause I know you guys worked on this together. Um, so you, you, you feel free to defer to any of the other, your, to the other panelists. Um, what was your inspiration for Stormy the Opera? Well, I uh, first came to live in the States in 2002. And when I did that, the word socialism was um, an obscenity, really, or, or, or a joke. And um, in the time that I was coming back and forth between the UK and the States, things changed. And in the 2016 election with Bernie Sanders, I was very inspired and um, I'm a political writer in the UK, and I wanted to respond to the times in the United States. And I thought it was a dereliction of duty that I wasn't writing something because I was very worried and anxious in 2016 about what was to happen. And things seemed to me to get worse. And my um, Storm of the Opera is a response to that. And it's a kind of story of how socialism might one yeah. day come to America, and I'm not talking about fundamentalist South American, Venezuelan, you know, fascist track socialism, I'm talking about democratic socialism, which has been so alien to um, a lot of American people. Oh dear, Excellent. made John Cho. <laughs> That's not promising. Yeah, well, <laughs> you are so okay. That was my inspiration. Uh, <laughs> okay, excellent. That's the fascinating. I, I didn't know anything about that. I mean, I, I did see the piece, um, but uh, that's that's fascinating. Yeah. So another another question, Kay. Um, what is Stingery? Well, Stingery is um, a platform for collaborating artists to bring dis different disciplines and to create kind of interesting and unusual work and different to a normal production company in which people are all gathered together basically with the, with the, you know from the same background it's an opportunity to be a bit more diverse and that's really what i wanted to do with stormy the opera because i'm a wordsmith an actress and a writer and um, I wanted to kind of stretch myself and, and extremely honored to work with John and Margot because they bring something totally different to the table for me. And, and that's what I want Stingery to be. Um, lots and lots of different disciplines coming together, but all with the same kind of ideological aim. You know, that's the thing that, that, that binds us. That, that I hope we want to bring about change for the good. Yeah, 
Thank you. One more, one more question. Um, I know we were talking about this a little bit earlier, uh, but why three Stormies? And if you want your, your other panelists to chime in on it, feel free, uh, panelists. Well, why three Stormies, I think, is Stormy Mind, Stormy Heart and Stormy Soul is because it opens up um, a discourse about how do we create a really good world? What are the kind of tools in our work box? How, how do we um, bring about change? I mean, John and Margot might have their own ideas about why there are three Stormies. Yeah, I have a um, couple of ideas. I think that uh, in the beginning of the play, you know, we, we all come out together, but then we all sort of come apart. And it, it really is a way of kind of, we, we deconstruct the, the character of Stormy into the three aspects of Stormy. And then these aspects keep coming back and then they break apart and they keep coming back. And it feels like each time they come back, they come back with more awareness of what's going on in the world. And um, one of the challenges for me was that as Stormy Heart, I also had to keep Stormy Mind and Stormy Soul. I had to sort of keep those in mind as I was playing Stormy Heart because we're all the same character, but we're just, we're one aspect of that character. Yeah. John, Absolutely. you want to add? Uh, no, I don't have anything to add. Um, I, uh, you know, other than I feel that, you know, I have the same, I had a similar challenge um, as Margo. Trying to, well, I mean, I don't, <clears throat> I know that I don't, I am not a trained actor. And so I feel like that was, um, that was challenging for me to, f to figure that out in one way, but I, but then also, I think because of my, because my background is dance and music, I am a blender. I'm like most comfortable when I'm dancing with other people, when I'm singing with other people. And so I feel like I used more of a physical um, or energetic, um, I took more of an, a physical or energetic approach to um, how I was vibrating, maybe my character was vibrating differently than the other two, or um, I think I also got more into the idea of who we were and that we were all trying to, that we were all trying to portray one character versus, um, yeah, like, cause the, there's the backstory, you know, which is that we're these, um, that we're, yeah, there's like 700 layers to this thing. Like, it's like we're, we're, there's the show that you're seeing, but then there is the show underneath that show. And then there is a third show that's happening underneath that show, which is who we all, you know, so like who we are and who we aren't and the layers and all of that kind of stuff. I think that helped me more um, because it, <clears throat> it gave me, it gave me permission to, to let, my inconsistency be part of that, you know? So if I, if I wasn't, if I was struggling to figure out how to connect to something, then I was able to, I was able to use, oh, I, I'm also this other person and I'm also this other person and I'm also John. Um, and, you know, so it's, it's a fascinating, it's a fascinating thing to experience. I don't really feel like I'm acting um, but I also don't really know what acting is like. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're like me, cause I'm also but. a dancer, uh, acting is dancing and, you know, actors might disagree with that, but, um, yeah, acting is dancing or dancing is acting. That's it. Dancing is acting. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that sort of, uh, dovetails into the next question. This is open to the three of you. Uh, how did you all meet? How did you three artists meet? I, guys. Yeah, we'll let Margo go first. <laughs> I, yeah, I, uh, I, I, it was a wonderful meeting for me. And I know Kay would not brag on herself like this, but there's an organization in Houston called Women in the Visual and Literary Arts. And after the election, um, we got an email from Kay and she said, it was, I'm paraphrasing, but basically, have you written anything that we could use in a show called Defiance? 
And so I sent her some stuff and she said, oh, great. And she pulled these women together and she took her, her written pieces and she, um, she took them apart. She put them in different orders. We rehearsed and we did a couple of, we did a couple of readings and I was just so impressed with the way that she directs and how she could bring out these performances from everyone. And so that's, that's my initial impression of Kay. And we just kind of, I watched her at the Fringe Festivals. She came to support me. And uh, so that, when she said, I've got this idea, well, you know, it was a no brainer for me. <laughs> yeah, Kay, yeah. And I, Kay and I met at um, a Fringe Festival or something. Um, and I don't think she knew that Margo and I knew each other at the time. Oh. Um, but she saw, she, you know, she, I don't know, saw what I was doing on that stage and was like, oh, there's somebody <laughs> that I can, that I want to work with. Um, and from what I remember when she, when she approached us with the idea of working together, it really was just to work together, but there wasn't really an idea at that point. It was like, oh, I want to make a musical. I want to make an opera. Um, that's maybe not an opera. And I don't think that the whole Stormy situation came about until, until later. I don't remember exactly, but I remember there being this, we're going to make a musical. How do you, what do you guys think about that? Before there was ever um, any sort of specific subject matter that was um, layered on. You mean the Stormy Daniels thing, the yeah. scandal? Well. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I mean, before that, before we had a before she had arrived at a top, at least my understanding was that there wasn't a topic. There was this mm. desire to create something with these other two people. That there was this thing that could happen between the three of us, and it's going to involve music, it's gonna involve some singing and some dancing and some acting, and you know some some you know some really intricate writing, and uh, we'll figure out what it's about later. <laughs> but I don't think, I think it was, I think the idea came to her pretty quickly what it would be. Um, I do remember, um, yeah, I mean, did it start with the image? Was there an image that started for you? Or I remember oh, you I, I, about I, the opening image um, and that was something that was cool, but. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm not, I wanted to write a play about the kind of all the all the others, all the people that Trump was kind of demonizing, you know, all those people, the LGBT community, the poor, you know, the immigrants, all those people. Um, the initial idea was, you know, wouldn't it be so cool if they all came together spearheaded by this kind of mythological kind of burlesque stroke, you know, mythological female character. Mm -hmm. And uh, and rose up against him and 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 saved the world, mm -hmm. and um, and and that kind of idea came out through looking in initially at the Stormy Daniels um, um, interviews, but very quickly changed into something totally other. And I did met um, Margot and I met on Acts of Defiance, which is a project that I did about about um, female um, um, uh, acts of insurrection and bravery, and. Um, and I, I was very intrigued by Margot because she's so unique and, and um, original, such an, an original performance. She made me laugh a lot. But I knew that to create a show, <laughs> we needed a third person. I felt we needed something else to bounce off. And purely coincidentally, I, I saw John sing and he did one some beautiful song um, in, in, in a fringe festival. And I didn't know he knew Margot at all. And um, I thought that he would be, um, that the, the three of us together would be interesting. We would have an interesting dynamic together. You know, you have to get, if you're working with three different performers, you have to get a certain kind of complementary dynamic going between the three of them. It's not like having, um, you know, a double act. It's totally different. And yeah. um, my, my intuition is that we would work very well together. And create something interesting. Yeah, excellent. So uh, this next question, so there's been positive reaction to the opening graphic. Um, how was the look of the production arrived at or thought out? 
Well, when I wrote the piece, I um, because I'm a very visual person, although I write words, I always write um, in, in, in tandem with visual things. And the, that, that opening image certainly came to me as I was writing it. I thought that that was probably going to be <clears throat> the opening image. I didn't want anything too subtle. That was This is very different for me. Normally I write kind of word driven political plays and this was quite different and I knew it had to have a strong visual component and that first image was with me very early on and luckily and we created it and on our, our photoshop that we did was very important I think for us to, to bond and also because that image of us without those costumes on um, you know with the bare shoulders and against that desert was kind of like um, important and I absolutely love that image we had so many other strong images from the bricolage that there was a great temptation to ditch that image and to get something from the bricolage but I stuck with it and I'm really glad I did okay this next question is uh, about the uh, so with the virtual version you had two characters um, Mags and Miss Johnny. <laughs> so, how did you arrive? Johnny. Yeah, let me get it right. Let must me get, get it right. right. It's Miss Johnny. <laughs> Miss Johnny. Um, so, yes, how did you arrive at these characters uh, in the introduction? Uh, over to John and Marco. Well, I mean, that's uh, that is sort of like I alluded to this a little bit in the beginning. So, like when I'm playing. Stormy Soul. I'm not John playing Stormy Soul. I'm Miss Jonay playing Stormy Soul. So the, the backstory is that we're these three, um, you know, women that have sort of found each other um, because I run this uh, burlesque, alternative burlesque circus uh, cabaret situation and so we all sort of end up coming together and uh creating creating this show and um so when we when we were trying to figure out what we were going to do in terms of i mean some of it was some of the 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 actual sort of d deep dive into who those characters were was facilitated by the grant because we had to there had to be a live component and so the, the way to do that is to do an introduction. Well, what better way to explore these characters than to have the characters do the introduction. And, and Kai, who is the writer, so K is, K is Kai. So K is writing as Kai, who is writing the play for Kai. You know, so it's like this uh, endless cycle of like shedding. So like, in a sense, we're all three people. You know, I'm John, I'm Miss Jonay, I'm, stormy soul so like the threes like the the shedding and the the multiplicity of personality and uh the layers of peeling back that have to happen to get at sources to get at you know the idea of, of history and all of that so i mean really that's where that's where it came from and then i think you know as you know i mean Kay can talk to um talk to you know what was going on in like what her perceptions were of those characters that led to how those characters were written that led to how those characters were performed um but it's interesting because those are the last characters those are the last characters to be revealed even though they're the they're supposedly foundational characters. So it's sort of like this thing that just sort of keeps sloughing, sloughing off and revealing, like it's, I don't know, it's not a flower, but it's, there is something blooming or, or like sloughing, like there's these things that are like continuously, like this is how it feels to, <laughs> to be inside of this thing. It's always sort of like, and then there's other characters inside of the performance beyond, you know, so there are the characters, the people, the the creatures, the ideas that Stormy Heart uh, interacts with, that Stormy Soul and Stormy Mind take on. There's the characters, the ideas, the creatures that Stormy Soul interacts with, that Stormy Mind and Stormy Heart become for her. Um, and so there's always, for me, there's always this question of who's, not necessarily a question 
but there's all there's sort of this like time travel that happens inside of it and dimension shifting that happens inside it where we could be anywhere we could be everywhere we could be anyone we could be everyone and so like these these additional and then there's even some dissension within within the cast as to exactly where we are at any given time and where this is taking place and whether or not it's on this planet earth or earth 1416 or you know like whatever it is but um but it also doesn't matter whether, you know, like at, at the end, it doesn't really matter if we agree because we're actually like whether the characters agree or whether the players actually agree about what's happening because the decision is actually that we're all together and we're all gonna figure out how to get through this together and we're gonna come back together. So the, uh, this idea of fracturing off and coming back together is something that keeps showing up. Um, inside of it and it's in it's in the process as well like there is um you know for k k is very clear that this thing happens in houston texas <laughs> for me that for me i don't know what houston texas that that happens in you know like which houston texas in which dimension doesn't really matter doesn't doesn't impact stormy soul in the same way that it impacts stormy heart in the same way that it, it's not as important or it's not important in the same way as it is important to stormy heart or to stormy mind and so that those types of dynamics are also sort of like they're written into it and then it's also just by the nature of the fact that the three of us are very different Kay is coming at it from a writer and an actress Margot is coming from it as a performer and a humorist and a writer and I'm coming from it as a performer a musician and a dancer that doesn't really I love words but I don't really understand I don't really understand theater and you and I you Wayne know this about me um it, it, it's not I I love theater but I don't understand it and I and that's I think why I love it is because I don't really understand what's going on I don't really understand I don't understand the the projection, but I but I love it at the same time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> along those lines, I would just say that I think there's different ways that we can understand things, and sometimes to have a intuitive understanding, which I think you have. Um, okay. Works. I mean, Mark I think I can act. K is K is convinced that I am that I am an actor and she's make she gets me to do it so like i mean i completely like i believe that it's happening i just don't i just don't know what it is i don't need to know what it is yeah. either you don't and you don't margo margo, margo. yes, yes margo. i had a, a, just a, a brief thought about the mags and miss charmaine yes uh, this was something that we had kind of we had uh we had thought about that and we uh, we, we kind of worked on that a bit about having, you know, having our backstory, but we really loved work and, and we didn't really have a whole lot of time to do it because Kay was in the UK and she was back in Houston. And, and um, so we had so many other things to deal with, but then once we had the introduction to work on, then Kay wrote the characters and we were able to sort of flesh out that backstory. So it was kind of like working backwards in a way. And I think that going forward, if we do uh, a live performance, I feel like having done that introduction will really help, help me with my performance in the future because I've got, I will be Mags playing Stormy Heart and I have a much clearer vision of Mags. And it was so much fun to do. Mm -hmm. And I was really grateful that Kay Kay wrote that introduction and really developed those characters for us. So thank you. Yes, excellent, excellent. So this next question, it just says discussion of music. So I guess that's an opportunity to talk about the musical aspect of the, of the piece, the play, the opera. Uh, well, um, I'll hand over to John and Margot as well to um, enlarge on this. But um, when I wrote um, Song of the Opera, when I wrote the songs, I had a, I, I don't know how to write a song without writing a tune at the same time. 
I don't know how to do that. So in my head, for the songs, which is different to the recitative, but the mm -hmm. songs I had a tune in my head and I was a bit kind of awkward about this and didn't know whether, because I'm not a composer or anything by, by any stretch of the imagination. I didn't qu quite know whether this was the right or wrong thing to do. But um, I think when the, I think for the most part, the tune I had in my head did make it into the show. Certainly with John's, um, what's your song called, John? One night, so man in the gold, you know, the, the Irish kind of lilting song. And with my song, I have uh, in-depth experience. We messed around with the horsey song. And um, I think I, I've grown in confidence in my ability to kind of write songs, really. Yeah. T was much more fun because the idea was that we would make that up all of us together. Mm -hmm. and that's how it all started off in my daughter's bedroom in Houston and the beginning the first seven or eight minutes we kind of improvised all of us together and that was um, probably the most enjoyable part of the rehearsal for me but what was really interesting was when we tried to give that process to the zoom it didn't quite work did it John? We couldn't no. get it to work in the right, we couldn't improvise in the right way, we couldn't get it to work. It was neither melodic nor, nor was it serving the story. It was much more difficult. And I think that is so interesting to, to realise that because what's different was that we just weren't together alive, breathing human beings in the room. There's something about being Zoom with the flat screen and being so far apart just interrupted our collaborating process, I feel. I don't know what yeah, you think. Yeah, and it became much it's more difficult. To, and, and, and the way and the bit I'm talking about is the new Zoom scenes that I really wanted to be sung, not just spoken. And by that stage, we'd kind of, I feel we'd worked out what our musical, because John is a beautiful singer. I'm... I'm, I, I'm more of a blues singer. I certainly don't have John's range or, or anything like that. Margot ha, has her own quality, but in the end we decided Margot should speak a little bit more. And my daughter thought that worked really, really well because we kind of, that was, because in terms of expressing the humanity of the characters, it worked really mm -hmm. well. Because for Stormy Soul, John has an unearthly quality. Um, and, and Margot um, was able to be very human and to be very identifiable. Um, so, you know, that's just so interesting. So in the, in the Zoom, what actually happened was that I had to kind of like go away in a corner of my garden and come up with, with all three things. And that was very, very hard. And, yeah. I did particularly, and I found that really hard because not being very musical, every time I improvised it, I came up with something different. Mm hmm and, um, you know, and every at the end of every day, I'd have a version of it and it would be different. Um, well, I mean, the, the, the thing that was the thing that was challenging was, I mean, like the the thing that was that made making it in the first place challenging was that we were writing it creating the music creating the choreography like putting it all together like right at the moment, you know, like we spent a considerable amount of time on it, but it was a really quick rehearsal process. And what we what we were able to make in that period of time was we thought we were going to make a 30 minute performance. <laughs> and and oh, it, John, it 10 up, minutes originally. Do you remember 10 yeah, minutes? Yeah, it was originally idea. supposed to be 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden it just turned into this to this thing. And we were like, oh my gosh. Um, and I think that um, what the way that I was, the way that I was working with, because Kay would write the lyrics and she would have a tune and we would be in rehearsal and we would just sort of be, um, uh, you know, singing to each other and, and playing around with it. And then I would take that home and then come back and we would do it again. And so we were, we were working more in real time with it. And so it was, it was happening as we were doing it. And you would think that with Zoom that it would be similar because you can record things and you can, you know, you have all of the things, but there's something about the, um, 
the way that it just didn't resonate the same way. And I think it was also compounded by the fact that we were trying to connect it to something that we had already done. And we didn't have the, we didn't have the ability to be with each other in the same way. Because mm -hmm. I think that the way that, the way that Kay and I worked out the songs, it's very specific to the relationship between Kay and I working out songs. Like, and and we were in a room we were in a room together and trying to figure it out and she would say well what about this what about that and she would sing something then I would sing something um, and I think some of the you know just the way that the tunes came out um, we were able to practice them in the moment in a in a different way and with with Zoom because of the way that it delays by the time by the time it gets back it just it didn't yeah. have the same time it was harder definitely it was harder. But I kind of grew in confidence <laughs> during, the, during the process. And I now really feel I can go away now and write a proper opera. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. No, Philip Glass, he wants to, you know, look out, look over his shoulder now. <laughs> I'm there treading on his heels. I mean, I really do think that, you know, it's very rough and ready, Stummy. We, we know it's work in, really work in progress. And... Um, there's lots of things in terms of the music of it that I would really love to develop um, and, and to move on. And, and I know more now about how to do that. I would approach it in a different way. Mm -hmm. I think it was very naive, our approach, which was cool, you know, and lovely. But I think if I was to write another opera, I would do it a little bit differently. I really do. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I was just looking at the next couple of questions. Um, You've already said some things about the challenges, I guess, or you said something about the difference between uh, working in the Zoom space versus working in the stage space. Would you like to add any more uh, to that uh, thing? Like, what are the challenges, the differences between working those two spaces? Um, like I said, I think you've kind of covered it in the, the, the breadth of what you've been saying. I, th I think the question, as I understood it, was really more about the change of, of what was the challenges of, of taking of, the show. That, of taking a live show yeah, and, then, and turning it into an online production. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and really, you know, when I said that to Human Arts Alliance, I said it out of the top of my head because I didn't want to lose the project. I, I said, well, I know what we can do. I knew we had these very primitive preview videos that we'd done and that we had them and that they were there, they were a raw material that we could use. But I just said it off the top of my head. If I had any idea of how difficult it was going to be, you know, <laughs> because um, I was literally tearing my hair out in terms of what I was going to do. It was so hard. And um, it just felt like a huge holy mess. You know, I had these very primitive preview videos too. One was done by Pete that shot one and Mel, Mel shot one and I had that and it was the sound was awful and the shots weren't right you know we didn't get the couldn't get the right performances particularly but they were there and they were one raw material and how were we going to make it into an, an online production it was really hard and um, but when I came up with the idea of it being a bricolage just the idea that I had a concept and that I had some, there was some kind of idea for what I was doing um, helped me enormously and I turned the corner. I thought it was just going to be a holy mess, but the whole idea of found objects, so, you know, because I, I also do visual artists, I, I do do collages and I understood it. Mm -hmm. So I understood that everything I found had to be there to serve the story serve the story and I and once I got that into my head that I wasn't nothing extraneous was being put in there if anything I had to earn its place in order to make it to be better understood because you know it's a very peculiar piece it doesn't have a particular you know beginning middle and end it is a, it is a kind of discourse piece it is a piece that provokes argument it's a really weird piece and a hard piece for lots of people to understand and get their head on and i think the bricolage helped it i think it helped it to make it clearer i really really do and to me that was a triumph that it made it clearer mm -hmm. um, and and i and i would continue 
to work in that way because it is working but it is a weird piece I don't know what John and Margot think about the whole bricolage versus the live production thing mm -hmm. yeah, yeah Margo. I thought it added a lot I think yeah, uh, I agree yeah Mm -hmm. all those things it was like a it was like a a moving uh piece of artwork mm -hmm. but when it was so hard things. because i have never done anything like that before ever and i had to learn i mean margo is a very skilled videographer i have only edited trailers and short thing 10 minute films and i had never edited anything and i had to get my husband to do help me with the with a I did all the creative decisions about everything, but in terms of sliding the stuff up and down on a computer, I had to get him to help me. And um, I would plan it all out in my head in the day, and then I'd have him for an hour at the end of the day. And that kind of way doesn't suit me at all, <laughs> because I like to know what I'm doing, and I like to do it, and it's done and dusted. And But hanging around all day until he could, you know, give me an hour, give me half an hour, it killed me. It absolutely killed me. Oh, no. And God knows that we've still got a marriage because I was like, you know, how we got there, I was like shouting at him and do this. We Now we have to do this and do the other thing. It was just hell. Oh, I really, my. it really was very, very difficult and very, very trying. But I know more now. I know the technical thing to do now more. Well, I will say having only seen the digital version um, I thought that this was very successful. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to hear the, the evolutionary journey that it took and, uh, and some of the pain and agony apparently mm. that it took to get mm. there, yes. <laughs> but the, the uh, outcome was, was amazing. So I'll just say that. Um, we just got a few more questions left. Um, so what are the plans for Stormy in the future? <laughs> so if you take the project forward uh, as a stage production, uh, what will you develop? What might you change? Uh, and then also, this is like a several part question here. Bear with me. One last off part of it. Uh, will you incorporate some of the uh, bricolage graphics, which I know you will, uh, in the future productions, stage production, stage production? Um, what would I d develop and change? Well, <clears throat> I've always had problems with the beginning, you know, mm. and um, and I think um, beginnings of plays are very, very um, di um, difficult. They really, they really always are. But you see, in the theatre, unless you know you really do something terribly wrong and you offend people or you're so terrible, they can't leave. So you have <laughs> license. We had license to have a slow beginning, and it was. It wasn't accidental, the slow beginning. It was something that I had kind of planned because of the journey that we take people on, you know. Um, but I think if we were, I think I would, I would look, at, look at the beginning and try and tweak the beginning a little bit. I was aware that that wasn't quite working for me and I needed to improve that. And what I would like to develop is we have a piece in the piece which is called the faux opera piece, which is actually mm -hmm. the piece where all the others come and arrive at Stormy and say savers and the poor and the people of color and all and, and, and the old soldiers and they all arrive and to Stormy and they say you need to save us. And I would love to develop that. It's about a seven minute piece. And I would love to develop it further um, in terms of a live thing with musically, with dance with visual images so that so that there is this nugget in the middle of it which is just kind of spirals into something um crazy and crazily crazy i'm sure john feels the same i mean we we only tapped in to that didn't we really yeah <clears throat> i feel that's the, that's the area i would like to develop mm -hmm. i think that <clears throat> um one of the things that I was that was sort of a, a light bulb or an aha moment for me was when um, was when we had to bring Wayne in to uh, do some voiceovers for Matthew the musician. And what I realized in that moment was that um, that Wayne that Wayne would be an interest would be interesting in that role, and um, that that character. Um, could um, 
that the trajectory of that character through the play, I think, well, it was always something that we were talking about. Um, well, we developed it, didn't we? I mean, and and um, <clears throat> I actually do think that worked, and and it did it did actually work from in, from my end, from friends who mm -hmm. watched it. That the story of of him and Stormy Heart um, actually worked. The story of their friendship and their alliance, even though it was you know just you know painted in. Mm -hmm. in, in stenciled in almost into the piece that actually um, that actually did work in actual fact I was pleased that I thought the rewrites that I did for the stage production worked in terms of the of the zoom and I thought that was fairly miraculous because that was very hard because mm -hmm. if I'd known I was rewriting it for an online production because Wayne I didn't know that when I did the rewrites which is the added zoom scenes I thought they were all going to be for the stage production I probably would have written different scenes if I thought I was writing for an online production. <laughs> so you see how convoluted and difficult it was. Mm. You know, we had wow. the we had the stage production. I went away and wrote rewrote it. I rewrote it, um, and then we had to do it for an online production, which was different again. Yeah. Wow, that's that's fascinating. Yeah, Margo, did you well, have I, anything? Well, I, yeah, I did have one thing. I, my dream is that someday we get to do this in Marfa. Yeah. Well, it's not you know it's our dream. You can't you can't um, hijack that dream for you all for yourself, Marco. <laughs> well, I have been. You know, no, that was John my knows, dream first. No, no, John knows. I have been wanting to go to Marfa for a long time, and in fact. I guess maybe two or three years ago, I submitted a film to their outdoor film festival and I was broken hearted when it wasn't accepted. So I've been trying to get to Marfa for several years now. So I well, love, I love Marfa too. Performer. And so does my husband. We, he loves West Texas and, and the, the Marfa festival, I just think is so cool. But I was thinking that if we don't get there live, maybe they could project <laughs> the bricolage on the side of a building. Yes, when, you know? when, we can, when we can actually travel somewhere, that would be awesome. Yeah, but, but I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously I would like to do it live, but if that doesn't happen, we could, they could take the bricolage and just, you know, project it. That would yeah. be awesome. I'll yeah. drive. <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> okay, so this next question, brace yourselves. How will the result of the election alter the future development of Stormy? Well, I know how it will it very quickly. On the results of the election. Mm. Yeah, Kay, what were we saying? Well, it, it, um, if Biden wins, it becomes a celebratory piece. And we celebrate the naivety of it, of its of, of its style and of in it, of its expression, and um, and it and, and it can be played as a celebration of what we have avoided. And if Biden loses, it becomes a dark, surreal warning um, of the next ten years, and and it is um, a horror story for for the poor, generous spirited American people. So I think either way, I think the piece um, has a life beyond November the 3rd. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> I, hope sure. it's a I hope it's a celebration. I hope yes, it's a naive, all. joyous celebration. <laughs> people can go and see it and say, yes, look, yeah. look, look, look at what we have done, what we have avoided. Yeah. yeah. Yes, very, very well articulated. Um, so Kay, you wrote a post talking, uh, talking about how, oblique, how obliquely you were exploring <laughs> populism and elitism in Stormy. Mm -hmm. uh, could you elaborate a bit on that? Well, I, I did write that in a Facebook post actually. And it did oh. get quite a little bit of, uh, of, um, of interest in, in terms of, of that. And, and yes, that is, the thing about Stormy is it's not a regular play. It, it sort of like provokes lots of little discussions and debates. And one of the discussion and debates is, is, is about um, how do we make our point? 
how do I, as an artist and a writer, make my point? You know, and I think, and and it's and and that is very current in America, isn't it? With the fact that we have um, the populist revolution in America resulted in Donald J. Trump. Ironically, you know, mm. here we have this um, man who who was was elected as um, a, a, because he he resonates in some way to a lot of 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 Americans and a lot of you call the middle class. Um, working American people, you know, and I found that very interesting. And, and and a lot of the music, to go back to the music and the musical story, I use that. I mean, the whole idea that we start off with this very highfalutin, um, you know, avant-garde opera, which becomes hijacked because one of the characters, Stormy Hart, says, I don't want this. This isn't working for me. It's going right over my head. I don't understand it. And so we, we go back to Little House on the Prairie, you know, and we go back <laughs> to real life testimony and the story of Billy Bob, you know, and how small girl, um, you know, a poor girl from a small town wants to become, you know, a, the greatest burlesque queen that's ever lived. And that's so we pull the rug under great art. You know, we pull the, the rug from under it and say, and that is um, a, an argument that um, obsesses me as a, as a, as a playwright because I have not found the answer to it. I do not know mm -hmm. the answer to how we best make our argument. And, and I took the opportunity of Stormy to just ask those questions. And it's in there, you know, um, and um, you have to dig for it because it's that kind of piece, but that argument is in there. Yeah. And, and, it, and it follows through because at the end of the day, you know, Stormy Soul says he, he looked for answers. She says she looks for answers on mountaintops. You know, but in the end, all that mattered was feeding children and and getting them and teaching them to sing. You know, so that kind of and and all those things are very important to me um, in, ter in terms of how we live our life and how we create art. So it's it's something that ob uh, um, preoccupies me. Uh, the yeah. whole idea of how how do we write? Yes. Well That's said. like the storm in the yeah. opera, because, you know, we pull the rug from under it, because it's not really an opera, opera at all, ever. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, this is very last. I have one more question here. Last question here, and it's open to everyone. Um, do you think that a theater can change the minds and hearts of the audience? Okay, Margo. I, I will say some, I will say some, my, some thoughts about that. I think that in most of our living, most of our lives, we spend on the left side of our brain trying to figure out um, how to make a living, how to have a good life. But when you go to the theater, you're kind of letting the right side of your brain free to just take in the information, to take in the images. And, and it really lets you sort of open up your heart to whatever the, whatever the, the writer and performance performers have to say. So I think that absolutely yes, that absolutely yes. Any kind of performance art, well, even static art like painting and sculptures and all of that. That, that's really the avenue to make us better people. So I would say definitely yes. Yeah. John. Well, I, I think what it has the capacity to do is to reveal where the work still is. And then I think the viewer has a decision to make in that moment about whether or not that's work they want to do. I still think, I still feel, and maybe that's, you know, maybe that's because I'm coming at it from a specifically a dance perspective um, where um, a lot of times <clears throat> because the because of the you know contemporary um, slash modern dance world concert dance world that I occupy um, I often get um, the um, I don't understand it I don't I don't understand what's going on that you know like I my work tends to be a lot is not narrative based and so um, what I find, what I find is <clears throat> that, and you know, I don't know everyone that asks me that question, um, but I do find that 
when people are asking me that question, um, they're not necessarily they're not necessarily coming to the theater, uh, coming to that theater to um, to do work. Um, they're coming to be entertained, and so I, I wonder what happened. I, I I wonder. I I like the idea that that performance and theater can change somebody's heart or and or somebody's mind, um, but I but I do still think that um, you have to be willing to change. You have to be someone that's willing to change your mind in order for that to happen. And I think that Stormy is a signpost for people who are interested in that conversation that maybe um, that maybe have conflicting ideas in, in their in their own heads. I don't know what, you know, like Kay said, like it's a, 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 a discourse that she's obsessed with this idea of um, what is the best way to make um, or how do we make our argument or what's the best way to make our argument. And I think that people who are seeking the argument um, are often people that I think this particular piece, um, I don't know what, you know, like, I don't know what we're, what the change would be. Um, and I don't, I, I guess I'm more responding to the question than I am actually asking the question. Um, Cause I think, I think that one of the things that we're realizing now or becoming, uh, having to face head on right now with the pandemic is the level to which the, um, the the industry that has been the industry that has been created through the field of art is actually dependent upon um, excess in a way that um, there's an element of what it is that we do that is no longer that is no longer accessible because theaters are shut. But the the thing that we do that can be that can be life changing is something that we can that we can still do and we have to be really passionate about it we have to really want it to be out there to consent to relearning what a theater zoom can be how can zoom be a theater how can video be a theater um, because i think that the i think that the forms have the power i don't necessarily think that the way that we've been using them for the past 50 years um, has revealed that people's minds have been changed in that way. See, for, for me, because I am a political writer, um, I have to believe that theatre um, can change hearts and minds. Otherwise, I'm wasting my time doing mm -hmm. it because... Um, I am passionate about the idea that theatre can change hearts and minds. It's such a public art form. It's a very democratic art form. Or it should be. I mean, um, sometimes it isn't. There's a, there is huge elitism in, in British theatre, that's for sure. But, but I write plays because I want to bring about change. I want to change things for the better. Um, naively, you know, uh, that's really what I want to do. And um, not everybody loved Stormy, <laughs> you know, that's for sure. I mean, I had one um, old friend who just said, I have to be absolutely honest with you. I, I couldn't follow it. I didn't like it. I'm not a socialist. I don't think Donald Trump is a despot. And um, I was extremely shocked. Um because I didn't know this person had all those views. Watching Stormy the Opera seemed to, you know, um, was a conduit for her to express all these things to me. Um, but lots of people did, you know, and, and did and did see it as a, a, as a, did enjoy the things about it, the, the simple naive things about it, because obviously I wrote something that I wanted people to have fun with too, mm -hmm. and to enjoy. And, and I was, I was, you know, I was um, trying out a different art form. I was going in a different direction and it was very interesting and useful. But, but just to answer that question, can theatre change people's hearts and minds? I don't know. <laughs> I don't mm. know whether it ever can. Um, I don't know. But I, I'm going to keep trying. 
I think that's the best thing to, to finish on is to say, I'm going to keep trying. Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> I mean, if I may add my little two cents in, <laughs> as I, um, being a university professor, I talk to my students about uh, art and what it does, what it can do. Um, I say to my students that at the least, uh, art uh, is, it inspires. I mean, that's, that's sort of why artists create the work uh, to inspire. So I don't know, is, ins- is inspiration change? Could be. Um, it can sometimes reveal truths about where and you are. And it can are. be a tinder. It can be yeah, a tinder for change. Tender. It could be a tinder for change. Exactly. Uh, or it can create a place that sets up clarity, like with your friend, Kate, who uh, said those things. And um, so you know, she got, she, in that moment, she was really clear about who she was, what she thought about this, that, and the other. So, and you, you got that message clearly. <laughs> And it sounds and it like was, she got the message clearly as well. Yes, and she did get the message clearly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, art is very complex, and um, yeah, it 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 has it it can do a lot of a lot of things. Um, so yeah, so we're at the end of our questions list now. Do we open it up to our viewers to ask a question or two? I don't know if we have a lot of time. Well, it's been okay. open. It's been open. Um, okay. And we haven't gotten nobody so far. Nobody's um, asked any questions. There's a couple of comments. People are excited. Excellent. Um, yeah. So, but I think well, if what, I think what if, we thought. Like oh, we, I'm sorry. Oh, what what is it, Margaret? Yeah, go ahead, Margaret. I'm just going to say that. Um, what we thought would be a 20 minute discussion has turned into an hour. <laughs> oh, and, I knew it um, would be at least 45 minutes to an hour. I knew it. And <laughs> I, I mean, for me, I, I just think this has been a great discussion. I've enjoyed every minute of it. And uh, thank you, Wayne, for oh, yes, being our welcome. moderator. We appreciate it so much. And Kay, thank you for staying up all night. Yes, thank oh, you. Oh, yes. For, uh, <laughs> with us. Appreciate that very much. And thank you for a long day of party, party, party. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Wayne. So, yes, you're welcome. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Yes, thank you. So we will, uh, I guess on that note, we will close this out. Let's give a, um, what is it, the dating game? You know. Oh, and so oh. one, two, three. Oh, I don't know that.